Hi guys, my name's Tana and welcome to Crypto Bible News. I think it's really relevant and obvious what we need to talk about first. Yesterday's Bitcoin's market crash, they're calling it Black Wednesday. Um, obviously there was a huge crash in the market yesterday. Some want to call it a crash, some want to call it a correction. Let's take a look at actually what happened and, and see how we actually got through all of that. Several large cryptocurrency exchanges had trouble staying open during yesterday's a market crash which saw bitcoin and ethereum lose 30 and 40 percent of their value respectively in 24 hours you even saw this go down the rest of the market and absolutely capitulating some of these other major coins v chain which is quite popular with uh, with a lot of the people um lost over 70 percent back down to five cents dogecoin which has been a massive hype lately which people just thought would just keep going up well, that lost 58% yesterday, which went all the way back down to 21 cents. And even another major such as EOS, losing 60% of its value, going back down to four and a half dollars, which was actually originally one of the first coins to break out recently. Um, and even that lost 60% as well. Leading US exchange Coinbase reported intermittent downtime throughout the morning while globally popular exchange Binance paused Ethereum-related token withdrawals. Gemini reported experienced lag times, and even Kraken noted user connectivity issues. Decentralized exchanges managed to stay up despite high trading volumes generated by uh, yesterday's sell-off. Now, I've got quite a long list here of some of the exchanges that went down. Bitfinex went offline. Binance went offline. Kraken. Gemini. CMC, Bittrex, KuCoin, which is another huge uh, market leading exchange, who boy went offline, and even Coindesk went offline. Now, one of the ones I actually really wanted to speak about that you, I probably haven't even mentioned in that list uh, was Coinbase. The reason why is because a few weeks ago when Bitcoin hit its high at around 64,000, that's the day that I, they ironically announced their IPO you'd think that a lot of money went into their security. You'd think they could handle quite a lot of trading volume. Clearly not. Not a lot of people were able to get out. Uh, a lot of people probably lost a lot of money, more money than they would have liked to. Um, obviously, if you held through it, then, you know, good for you. Like I said, some people are calling this a correction. Some people are calling it a crash. What actually happened, I suppose only time will tell. Let us know what your thoughts are on what actually happened and how were you guys affected? Were you able to get online and make a trade or put a stop loss or take money out? Ethereum related tokens weren't able to be traded or withdrawn on Binance. Let us know what happened to you guys, it'd be good to know. And just as a side note, Binance had a maintenance update on their leverage tokens during the thick of things of when Bitcoin was going down. Coincidence? Right, on to the second part of today's news, how crypto influencers are reacting. Whatever way you look at it, the crypto market's huge sell-off has got people talking. This is what Elon Musk had to say. Tesla has, and then a diamond emoji, and hands emoji. Now, wasn't it just last week this guy was pretty much taking the mick out of Bitcoin and, you know, saying how bad it is for the environment? And now he's saying Tesla has diamond hands. Does this guy like Bitcoin or not? What is his agenda? I don't really get it at all. Now we move over to Michael Saylor. Entities I control have now acquired 111,000 Bitcoin and have not sold a single Satoshi. Hashtag Bitcoin forever. So this guy's obviously still on the, on the hype train. Crypto influencer Anthony Popliano, also known as Pomp, who is widely popular on Twitter, said that he is not worried. He goes, every bull market has to indoctrinate the new class of crypto enthusiasts. Volatility is the name of the game. I think what he's basically trying to explain here is that crypto is extremely volatile. For the new person that would have just joined crypto yesterday or the day before, they must be thinking, what the heck is going on? But in reality, crypto is always going to be this volatile. Next month, we might even get the same thing. I think he's just trying to get the point across that this is the norm. It is the name of the game. But he's not worried. So, you know, should we be? Now we move on to CZ, the CEO of Binance and a major influence on crypto Twitter. He says, and he made it clear that hodling was the best thing to do or holding on for dear life. If you panic sell, he says, you won't be crypto rich. 
making it clear that it wasn't financial advice as much as it may sound like it. Now we get an opinion from a news outlet, Bloomberg Live. You've got Brian Brooks on there and he says one of the reasons Bitcoin is down today is people's interpretation of the Chinese government being believed to have said we're basically banning crypto. He says nobody is going to ban crypto. It's a two trillion dollar asset class. Adding to that, Brooks goes on to say it's okay to be in the asset class and that the SEC needed to be clearer on regulation. While Kathy Wood, CEO of investment management firm ARK Invest, said in a different Bloomberg interview that some traders just dump and run. She also added that evidence pointed to Bitcoin being in a capitulation phase or the perfect time to buy the market is on sale. It'll be interesting to know your guys' personal stories. Did you guys buy yesterday? Did you sell? Did you tell people to not panic? Were you calm? Let me know what your guys' thoughts were. Now, moving on to the last segment of our news today, and probably the reason why everything happened yesterday, China cracks down on cryptocurrencies. Beijing banned banks and payment firms from providing services related to cryptocurrency transactions. It also warned investors against speculative crypto trading on Tuesday. It follows falls in Bitcoin of more than 10% last week after Tesla said it would no longer accept the currency. On Wednesday afternoon, Bitcoin recovered some ground, although it still was down 10.4% at 38,131. On Tuesday, three state-backed organizations, including National Internet Finance Association of China, the, Bank, the China Banking Association and the Payment and Clearing Association of China issued a warning on social media. Jeez, how many associations are there that are going off the Bitcoin right now? They said consumers would have no protection if they were to incur any losses from cryptocurrency investment transactions. They also added that recent wild swings in the cryptocurrency prices seriously violate people's asset safety and are disrupting the normal economic and financial order. Now, Neil Wilson of Markets.com said China has for some time been putting pressure on crypto on the crypto space, and this marks an infestation. Other countries might follow now as central banks make strides towards their own digital currency. Until now, Western regulators have been pretty relaxed about Bitcoin, but this may change soon. Guys, obviously there's been a lot of FUD recently, a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt. It happened yesterday and it's going to happen in the future as well. If you want to join the crypto game and become a millionaire overnight, brace yourself for more days like this. It's going to be up and down. Please let me know your thoughts on what happened yesterday. Let us know in the comments down below. And guys, please like, subscribe, comment and visit our other socials. We'll be trying to keep you up to date with all the news as it comes. Guys, I'll see you soon.